Let's talk about some accounting assumptions that we have when we are preparing our financial statements. Your book covers uh, some information about the conceptual foundation of accounting. We're going to skip that and just go straight over to the four accounting assumptions. The most basic accounting assumption is the entity assumption. The entity assumption states that the business is a separate economic unit. It is separate from its owners and other businesses. So we need to make sure that the business has sharp boundaries drawn around each entity so as not to confuse it with other entities. For example, let's say that you decided to start a lawn mowing business and you decided to call it JJ Mowing. The minute that you start your business, JJ Mowing is its own separate economic entity. The business is separate unit from its owner, that is you, and you have to make sure that you keep the accounting records of JJ Mowing separate from your personal records. The second assumption is continuity or going concern assumption. Sometimes it's called a continuity assumption, sometimes a going concern assumption. In this assumption, we assume that when we are measuring and reporting accounting information, we assume that the entity will continue to operate long enough to use its existing assets. Assets we're going to talk about later, but for example, land, building, equipment are all considered assets. So we assume that the business will exit long enough to use its existing assets for its intended purpose. So to summarize, basically what this says is that the entity will continue to exist indefinitely. Let's take an example. You all know J.C. Penney. The retail company was founded in 1902 by James Cash Penney. James Cash Penney doesn't exist anymore, but the company still exists and we assume that it will exist into the future, into the indefinite future. Third assumption is called the historical cost principle. Here we assume that assets should be recorded at the actual cost measured on the date of purchase. Let's take a look at an example to explain this. Let's say that you're looking at a tract of land. The land was advertised for $1 million. You were interested in purchasing the land, so you had the land appraised and the appraisal value came in at $1.1 million. But you don't want to pay $1.1 million or the advertised price of $1 million, so you decide to go and make an offer to buy the land at $800,000. After negotiations, you settled, you and the seller settled at a price of $900,000 and you purchased this land for $900,000. In your books of accounting, the business will show the actual price, which is $900,000, as the cost of the land that you purchased. The summarize the historical cost principle says you record the cost of anything at the amount you paid for it. Not the advertised price, not the price price, but actually how much you paid for it. The fourth assumption you're going to learn at this time is called the stable monetary unit assumption. Under the stable monetary unit assumption, we assume that the dollar's purchasing power is stable over time. Again, let's look at another example. Do you remember the for tract of land that we bought for 900000 when we were looking at the historical cost principle? Let's assume that that land was bought in 1980. Let's assume that the land that we bought was the land that Mr. Rich Mall was built on. The question is, how much would the books of accounting show for the value of that land today? Because we assume that the dollar's purchasing power is stable over time, we ignore inflation. We assume that the dollars last year is worth the same as the dollar today and will be the same as the dollar next year. So in our books of accounting, that land that we bought for 900000 will still be shown as $900,000. We ignore inflation and any appreciation in value that the land has had over the last 30 or 40 years. The reason we have the stable monetary unit assumption is so that we can compare reports, financial reports from one year to the next and they are not adjusted for inflation so we are comparing apples to apples. So as a summary, these are the four assumptions that we use when we are preparing financial statements and um, this, prop this particular document summarizes it for you.